So I got a question about what exactly is the Commodore room. So what I decided to do was to give a quick tour. This won't be a long video, but it'll give you an idea of what the Commodore room is and, you know, kind of what goes on. So the Commodore room is a room in my basement. As you can see, it's painted roughly the same color as the Commodore 64 background when you power it on. And this is basically my workshop. So I like to tinker around with a lot of electronics. The Commodore line of electronics are my favorite, or I should say the Commodore line of computers. And so I've got a setup, you know, basically just allows me to work on and tinker with all the Commodore things. So we'll come down here, we'll start just briefly with discs. This is essentially where I keep most of the Commodore media. A lot of these are original, a lot of them are copies. As you can see, there's a big stack of cartridges there, a variety of different types of things. I really try to keep about one of everything if I can find it. And so, just a variety of doodads. So next to that, I have my documentation cabinet. So essentially, I try to keep, you know, one of everything, one copy of all the books. And so there's a lot of old electronics magazines, as you can see, programming manuals and, and whatnot here. All these cabinets come from Ikea. They were cheap and they fit perfectly down here as you can see. Not a lot of extra room so I kind of I kind of use them for pretty much everything. The next cabinet is Projects in Flight as you can see. There's an old Atari, several Commodore 64's, some other little goofy projects. And at some point I'll do a video on that. I need to build that all the way up. Save that one for later. So this is basically where I just keep all the things I'm working on. Uh, otherwise, I'll lose track of them and certainly would lose the, the bits and pieces. So I just have a cabinet dedicated to projects. Next over from that is I've got some Amiga equipment. I do have an Amiga 1200, 1000, 500, 2000. I've got several models. I was not as big into the Amiga, but I certainly enjoy playing with them. So I've got that stuff there. And here is rough storage with a lot of components. A little bit of Apple things, as one of my sons is very big in the Apple 8-bit. So, mainly just storage in this one, a variety of things. And finally, at least in this row of cabinets, some oddball things that I have. Obviously some Commodore things. That is a 1570 disk drive that I should do a video on at some point. I converted it over to US Power so I could play with it calculators, a lot of doodads, and of course lots of Commodore equipment tucked pretty much everywhere. So here is a cabinet full of equipment uh, in need of repair. So all of the Commodore 128s, the Amiga, and a whole row of 64s there all need some love and attention. Obviously I have a bit of a problem. I've got four 64 SX's. I've never actually worked on one of those. One of them worked. The other three I think are in different states of functionality so I need to tear those apart and get into it. I'll do a video on that when I get there. Some Commodore things, uh, an old oscilloscope, and some equipment that I've repaired in the past. So there's some some pretty good stuff over there that's got some kind of fun mods to it. This is my game playing station. This is generally where I get in and, and play some games. I've got a 128 with all the drives and all the fun stuff there and then of course my the very top my son's Apple IIe. Now over here as you can see and probably saw earlier there is a fair amount of what looks like Radio Shack cabinets. Oddly enough that is exactly what it is and so when Radio Shack went out of business in my town I went over and I bought the cabinets and then everything that was in their cabinets so I won't embarrass myself with telling you how much I paid but I did get a lot of cool stuff so in here not only do I have all the Radio Shack original parts, but then a lot of my own. And so I've got, really need to do some reorganizing here. But we've got lots and lots of Commodore pieces and parts, 3D printed things, um, you name it. I probably have it in here. If it was a 80s era piece of electronics, I'm pretty sure I have a lot of things that can help fix it. So, yeah, there's all kinds of stuff in here. But this is basically my parts bin. Here we have another stack of the uh, Radio Shack parts drawers. I use these for all my tools, so I've got, you know, basically all of the 
electronics tools in here from all sorts of wiring and pliers and stuff like that to you know, label maker, the HP calculator which is a must if you're doing any engineering work, multimeter, all sorts of stuff. There's the EEPROM programmer and just all kinds of other things in here but this is essentially where I keep all my tools. And then of course your second set of hands and all your soldering things and of course hand sanitizer. Here is one of my workbenches, power supply, oscilloscope. I'm always on the lookout for a good set of screwdrivers. Computer, digital multimeter, things like that. So this is essentially where I can sit down and do some troubleshooting. I have the other oscilloscope if I need to do different things there. These lights are really cool. They're LED with magnifier. Awesome for working on things. So I've got a few of those. Here we have the soldering bench. This is actually the Yellow Beast that I've been playing games on and the F1541 for the last few videos. So this is my soldering workstation essentially and I'll, I'll play games on here. It's really nice to have these monitors. These are Dell monitors. I'll put below you know, the specs on some of these things if you're interested. And this arm is really handy because I can move this monitor up and down and flip it around and get it out of my way. I'm working on things. I like to do the monitors on the arms as you can see there. And then, of course, really important, not that I've needed it, but in case I need it, I've got the fire extinguisher. So here I try to get nice examples of the computers. And so I've got a few here, as you can see. I also have the complete run of several different Commodore magazines down there. I've got a couple videos I've been working on with the magazine, so there'll be some neat stuff to come there. And then, of course, those Kickstarter cases, the clear and the blue. Um, each of those have got their own little special story behind them. And the next cabinet over, I try to keep all the original equipment in the best condition in the box. So most of the things here are really, really nice examples. Um, I try to get low serial numbers if I can. This is just some of the things that I've got. And then finally here, this is my collection of games. Again, try to keep everything as original, as complete as possible. So I've got some really good ones in here, and I want to do a series of videos on the SSI games. I think they really have an interesting story behind them. But a lot of good games in here, and so we'll do a couple videos in the future on some of the games and the packaging and whatnot. So right here is an example of Mule. This one here has actually never been opened, so I put it in the little... Uh, black box to protect it, but that is an unopened original copy of Mule, which is one of my favorite games, so it's super cool. And this right here is from Ahoy Magazine, which, if you recall, published um, Commodore programs and game reviews and whatnot uh, back in the 80s. So this was actually my first computer paying job. I had written a little machine language program that modified the print command to give you some different you know, effects. And Ahoy liked it. And as a matter of fact, it looks like they, they wanted to pay me $30 for it back in 1988. So that was really cool. Um, the not so cool part about it was they went out of business before they could publish the article. So I still think it's kind of neat. Cool piece of Commodore history. So I hope you've enjoyed this quick tour around my excessive compulsive behavior as it relates to Commodore equipment. If you enjoyed the video, go ahead and give us a thumbs up. If you have any questions, feel free to use the comment section below. Thanks for watching, and I hope you'll come hang out with us in the Commodore room again real soon.